All right, guys, KB32 here, check it out. We're sitting up here in the Freedom Apartment up north. Uh, and I thought this would be a good opportunity, since I'm stuck here anyway, that we do a little conversation about holsters and the evolution and things that I found out over the years and what direction I have gone in on several different occasions. And well, we're sitting here, so why don't we do this? I actually got a camera up above. So, um, all right, so if you're getting into the firearm game and you're carrying concealed, there's a couple different things that you're gonna be looking for. And I'm not the wherewithal on holsters, but I've been around the block enough to know what holsters I like and what's not. And just because you're not on this table does not mean I don't like your holster, okay? Uh, for instance, this guy right here, this is, and I used to hate Glock, and Mr. Holsters, you remember him? Um, for my birthday, about four or five years ago, I bought this Glock 19X. And the holster, the mainstay holster that this thing went in was a Vetter holster. And I like a pancake holster for this guy for the ease of just going on and off. And it literally, uh, you couldn't see it underneath the shirt. That's how nice it was. Um, so I've worn that holster to absolute death where it actually cracked and not because of anything other than I've worn it for four or five years and I need to get a hold of those guys. By the way, all these firearms have been cleared, <laughs> uh, but you'll see me clear them again because I can't tell you how many little holes end up in houses because somebody thought it was clear. So anyway, uh, so I had this in a Vetter holster, which was one of my favorites. Now. Uh, one of my good friends, he's no longer in business, he actually made this holster for me. And this was for the CZ P09, P07. Shoot, it's been so long, I can't even remember what uh, these guys are called anymore. So anyway, this was one of my favorite carry guns simply because I like a double action, single action. Anyway, uh, this was a great holster. And the pancake holster, it worked out really nicely. and. Unlike a lot of other pancake holsters, the degree that this thing is angled forward is a little bit more than your normal deal because I like this straight up and down. It was more concealable. So in any case, pancake holster is a great, great option, especially when you're talking about a mid-sized firearm like the Glock or the P07. Now, uh, we'll talk about these over here in a few minutes, but this, this is my everyday carry, and believe it or not, it's just a simple, and I did clear this before we came in here. This is a Smith & Wesson, this is their MMP45 shield, and boy, does it need to be cleaned. Uh, it's my everyday carry. I love this thing because it does pack seven rounds of 45, but we're using the end waistband holster. Now, the ease and operation of an end waistband holster, and you've got to lint. Yeah, we probably need just to go ahead and clean this thing is that you can just put it inside your waistband right here at the, uh, what do you call it, the four clock position. Uh, sometimes even I'll put it right there in a Penix carry. It might be tilted the wrong way, but at least I feel a little bit more comfortable carrying it like that, which is interesting. But this is a CYA and I bought this off of Amazon real quickly because we were heading out to Texas and I wanted to bring in this as my concealed carry and I didn't have a holster for it. And guess what? We really never look back. Uh, it holds it in there, it's very snug, and I think this thing was like 35 bucks off of Amazon, something like that, and it's got the uh, carbon fiber look. But it's been a really, really good holster over the years. And again, like I said, is for ease of operation, this is my go-to concealed carry. It just packs a lot of punch. Okay, so that covers concealed carry stuff. Um, we're gonna be delving in on duty holsters versus, uh, say for instance, competition holsters here in a few seconds. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that guy away. Do, 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 do. Comtac. Uh, okay, so <laughs> in my three gun deal, uh, we went from uh, a, C, uh, no, a, a Sig Sauer P226 TAC Ops to this guy right here, or what else did I have besides that? Oh, I ran the, uh, the Shadow 2, which had his own series of holsters. Which, by the way, back in the day, I used this guy right here. And this is the uh, Ben Steger uh, drop leg holster thing. And this is really nice because you do have so many different options in which you could hold a holster. Now, this is more specific to USPSA. And the reason I say that is a lot, these guys are they're pretty much gonna start off shooting their pistol, right? Um, in three gun, a lot of times we'll start off shooting shotgun or rifle. And then what happens is you end up running across the stage and when you have something like this or you have something like this, which is I think the, the cheapest thing in the world, okay? 
Um, there's really no definitive click in there as you notice, but uh, you, you lose a gun out of the holster while you're running around uh, during the stage and you are really quickly DQ'd. And DQing on a major, and I swear to God, I was like at the dusk and one of those poor guys, the first stage of the day, he went to reload his uh, Glock. And a lot of those guys are not competition shooters, uh, but he fumbled the pistol and it fell out of his possession and that was the end of his day on the very first um, stage of the day. So in any case, uh, and I know we're rambling on and probably going in 18 different directions, I'm okay with this type of holster and or this type of holster. This is a, uh, a Red Hill Tactical, which by the way is probably one of the, the, the most, uh, I think probably one of the more refined uh, holster manufacturers out there as you can see this is dual color carbon fiber on the outside and you can just tell the difference in the fit and I think I got this holster so that we could run uh, Rob uh, <laughs> Pops Quest and I went down to the two gun nationals down in Florida or no it was Alabama Alabama the marksmanship unit uh, this is a good competition holster but again you can tighten it up with these adjustment pieces here but what's going to happen is there is the potential for that thing to pop out so a lot of times we see guys in three gun they got holsters like this if they're transitioning from state or from one position to the other it's just always put your hand down make sure that this thing doesn't pop out the evolution of our competition life is that we upgraded to this guy right here this is the uh, atlas titan thing weighs a ton probably it is the best pistol in my uh my collection that I have it probably it needs to be clean I need to hand it over probably need to go ahead and let X-Ring uh, test it out because he always sends me my guns back uh, impeccably clean but uh, in any case and eh, there's the mag release I've got his mag release on there so what happens is this guy right here okay um, this has the RTI system on it from G-Code and as you can see these guys right here and I'm going to show you this. This is the evolution of where I went from uh, where we had the drop leg holster like this to this guy right here. And the reason for that, and I actually have it set up on my other competition belt, which is not this belt. But the cool part about this is that it has these slots in here. And if, from the evolution that you can see, the rest of these holsters here are all equipped with the adapter that goes in this and as you can see these are three screws here okay this has a little bit of different configuration but it's the same it uses the same RTI disc thing here you can see this one is the same and that this one is as well this is a g-code uh sock reg sock rig this is a G-code deal as well. Um, okay, so we're gonna go on. I'm gonna show you the cool thing about Red Hill Tactical versus G-code versus a, another uh, manufacturer of holsters. But what the deal is, is that you could take this and insert it in here, set it down, and then by the means of this little tab here, okay, you actually can click it down. And that guy's not going anywhere. Now, in three gun, uh, not necessarily USPSA three gun that those guys, and I think that they've given us a little slack here, is that you could remove this, okay? So say for instance, this firearm was in this holster, had that right there, okay? And you're shooting three gun, and you didn't feel like there was a stage where you didn't have to have your firearm. You didn't have to go to a safe area. You just depress these little things here, press that back, pick this up and you can take your your pistol out and it remains in the holster and it remains safe cleared all the way um, now here's the one thing that I've done now they all will fit this guy right here which is really neat you can go here um, and because I've moved to open class I don't have to have the uh, the shell caddies like I normally would uh, you can see it goes right there I can take this and move it like this the same thing with this g-code holster here put it right there it won't go anywhere so I have one one belt okay like this guy right here uh, that has the uh, the hook and loop system on the inside and I can put pretty much anything on it and you take the RTI system like this and you can put any holster on here 
So let's talk about this. This is the G-code holster right here. Uh, this is specific to 2011s. Now the only thing I had to do is I did have to trim out this little part right here, if y'all can see that, for my uh, safety right there. And as you can see, boom, it goes in. I don't have to worry about it and as well as it blocks the hammer, which is absolutely one of the essential parts. If you're running around, you definitely don't want this thing going on. Now here's the difference. You see how that's flopping in and out right there? Well, when I decided not to run this in the immediate future, um, I wanted to go ahead and run the Legion X5, this guy right here, which is topped off with the Delta Point Pro from Leupold. The nice thing is, is that if you ever dump this in a bucket, you don't have to worry about putting it on safe like you do this guy. That's a DQ or a stage DQ offense. So I first, when I started running this, we started running into this thing called carry optics, then it's called modified. I wanted something like this, and I know we're, we're going on and on, and I can't actually remember who makes this holster. They're located in Salisbury, North Carolina, really nice company. Um, and they were the only ones that I could find that would make a holster that was suitable for the Legion X5 and the use of a Surefire, just like this, as you can see. And I'm gonna put it right there. So the cool thing is, and we're getting ready to mount a uh, red dot to this guy from the guys over at Cy Lee. Uh, he finally hung his flag the correct way on his box, hopefully, and uh, we'll go from there. But in any case, the cool thing is, this holster is suitable for the uh, the uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the X300 Ultra from Surefire that I like the way it fits, and I could turn this into basically uh, a duty belt at any one point in time and run it just like that. Another option also is that I can use this firearm right here. I like this guy right here better because. Uh -oh. Uh, for a carry use because it doesn't have the magnesium field uh, grip and it's not as heavy uh, and it's basically the same firearm so the, the consistency of the shooting uh, is very close to one another okay so let's talk about this the uh, one of the other items is because I do like the, the this guy right here Glock 19x is and I bought this guy from G code and you'll see the reason why is that I can put my 300 on here and there again I have the same system that I can bump in here and I can go right back to my X19X. All right, Red Hill Tactical by far uh, for competition use is probably one of the better holsters out there and I'm going to show you the reason why. If you could look at this, this is my Atlas, and I'm going to probably go ahead and get a holster from uh, the guys at Red Hill for that. Um, this is also a Red Hill Tactical. You don't have any, well, until you loosen it up, then I'm shaking it around. But this guy right here is just as sweet as it can be. And I'm, I've got another three gun we're going to be shooting uh, the first week of August, and I'm looking forward to doing this. Now, the cool part about this is they're using a different thumb release, okay, for the hoop and bell right there that is just a simple rotate down. It is so smooth, boom, done, versus, say for instance, um, the G code, which is about the smoothest ever. You just push that straight down, okay, if you're used to that kind of thing. Uh, the same thing on this guy right here, it goes straight down and releases. This one, this one, <laughs> where's my, uh, this guy right here. So this thing, when you put it in there, you can actually not, you don't have to have the light on there, but it's gonna run around like that. And I don't really, I don't feel, I don't hate that. Hey, it's a motorcycle gang. But what happens is you actually have to depress this out like that. Uh, it's kind of an awkward moment, movement. You can tell that this company uses this thing. Oh, look at the screw loose right there. Mm. I need to fix that. Hopefully I got the interior nut. So anyway, we got that going for us. And yes, it is in there. All right, so we can just tighten that bad boy up. Another thing, guys, check your screws on your holsters. Uh, they do come loose. And when you've got something dancing around in there, you don't want to know why. So if I had to choose uh, duty holsters, I do like the G-Code. This guy right here is absolutely pretty incredible. And it does run in there smooth. It doesn't hold in. 
that's a really, really nice deal and I do like it a lot. Uh, as far as competition, Red Hill Tactical just is just the best out there. Uh, and it's smooth. I'm gonna put a little vegetable oil on that thing, actually, let it run smooth. Um, but that's it. So guys, this is a real quick uh, video, talking a little bit about nothing, a little bit about holsters and my experience. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them down below. Uh, that's it. Another thing is I like, uh, when I'm shooting open classes, you could take this thing off without having to worry about the rear uh, stuff that you normally would, like a Safari Land uh, belt. And uh, yeah, that's it. This is really nice. And I don't even remember who makes this. I ordered this off of somewhere. I had to modify it right here to actually fit these items on here. These are all G-code. Uh, accessories but shooting what I do and at any one point in time I could put med kits on the back of it. it's got a molly hook on there I, I put a thing with my uh, rangefinder back here might put something else right here but yeah that's it uh, thought it'd be a lot of fun you know useless little video y'all let me know it's KB32 if you like the video please give it a thumbs up subscribe now already done so support red white and blue God bless America God bless those men women in uniform 24 7 for our freedom because freedom comes in about a 1.2 pound trigger pull. Oh, that's so nice. Y'all be good. I'm out of here. Boom. <laughs>